Air Transit Airline Flight 236 was en route from Toronto to Lisbon. It was midnight and the ship was cruising in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean at an altitude of 39,000 feet. This is a situation pilots face daily and there was nothing abnormal about it. But there was something in the ship that was going to change the whole situation in a few moments. Let me tell you here that the land is not visible even from an altitude of 39,000 feet above the Atlantic Ocean. There, the captain suddenly realized that the ship was about to run out of fuel. It was a very scary situation for both pilots because running out of fuel over the Atlantic Ocean can only mean death. Welcome once again in the videos of Pineapple Updates. Viewers this incident took place on August 23, 2001. An air transit airline, Airbus A330 was being prepared for a flight from Toronto to Lisbon at Toronto Pearson Airport. It was going to be a 7-hour non-stop flight, and therefore 48 metric tons of fuel was added to it and the boarding process was started after preparation. It was 9 p.m. local time, at that time. Flight 236 was carrying 293 passengers and 13 crew members, including two pilots. The flight captain was 48-year-old Robert Pesch, who had 16,000 years of flight experience. The first officer was a 28-year-old Dirk Dejager, and also had 5,000 hours of experience, 400 of which he had flown in the same Airbus A330. As for the aircraft, it was the A330 model of the then state-of-the-art Airbus, which was only two years old. There was no shortage and no fault in the plane. After completing all the flight checks, the pilots guided Flight 236 to the runway and took off with the permission of ATC. After takeoff, the pilot turned the plane across the Atlantic Ocean towards Lisbon. Within minutes, the aircraft reached its cruising altitude of 39,000 feet. Generally, the pilots do not have much to do on such long flights, as the autopilot system does most of the work. Pilots simply monitor the situation and keep the control tower informed of their location and updates. Four hours had passed since Flight 236 had taken off. By now, everything was going on normally and most of the people in the passenger cabin were sleeping, as it was night. The plane had reached the very center of the Atlantic Ocean, and that was when a problem occurred in the plane. At 1 o'clock in the morning Canadian time, the pilot made an abnormal reading of nodes in engine number 2, the right engine of the aircraft. The oil pressure in the engine was showing high, the oil content was low, and the oil temperature was also low. This kind of error was seen by the pilots for the first time in their career. He immediately opened the flight manual and tried to find out about this strange error. Normally, the oil temperature rises over time when the aircraft is operational. But here, it was indicating low temperature, which was not normal at all. They could not find any information about this error in the flight manual. The pilots contacted the maintenance unit of Error Transit in Canada and informed them about the error. Unfortunately, the maintenance unit was also unaware of this error. He asked the pilot to monitor the error and contact him again shortly. Although the plane's right engine was showing faulty oil readings, there were no problems during the flight. Another advisory problem is displayed in front of the aircraft error. This problem was not error-related but fuel-related. Commercial airlines have fuel evenly distributed across their wings, and it was noticed that Flight 236 did not have the same amount of fuel in both wings. The right wing had less fuel content than the left. Now, normally, this problem is not that serious, as this problem can be fixed during the flight itself. The captain opened the cross-feed valve to fix the problem, allowing fuel to flow from the left wing to the right wing. And the Minto now had equal fuel content in both wings. It was only after 10 minutes that the captain started seeing the low fuel warning. This was a problem that no pilot wanted to face, and that too, in a plane full of passengers. The pilot noticed that the fuel in the right wing was low again, and now, there was not enough fuel in both wings combined to reach the left wing. 
This time the matter had become serious. There were also not many options to divert the beach plane to the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. In reality, they had only one option, and that was Azores Island. These islands are part of the Portuguese territory in the Atlantic Ocean, where there is an airport on an island called Terchera. The captain contacted Sena Maria ATC at the first opportunity and informed them that he was going to land at this airport due to fuel shortage. But the pilot was still not sure whether he would be able to reach the airport or he would have to land in the ocean. At that time, there were 7 tons of fuel in the plane. That is about 7,000 ka JT. It looks like a lot, but in reality, it was only 6% of the A30's fuel capacity and that too was depleting very rapidly. But the question is, why was the fuel running low? Was there a faulty sensor giving false readings this time too? Or was it actually a lack of fuel? Low fuel is only possible if there is a fuel leak from somewhere. To find out, the captain instructed the flight crew to go and monitor the trailing edge of the wing. If there is a fuel leak, there will definitely be an indication. But due to darkness, Caro could not get any such indication. Now, the condition was that one ton of fuel was running out every five minutes. It was now clear to the captain that the fuel must be leaking from somewhere. They now had only 25 minutes of fuel remaining, with which it was not possible to reach Terchera Airport. Meanwhile, Captain and First Officer Lagkar were in contact with Maintenance Unit and ATC. The maintenance unit instructed the captain to take the aircraft from 39,000 to 20,000 feet to confirm the fuel leakage. But the captain refused to do so, because the pilot believed that even if the fuel leakage was confirmed, it would not be possible to take the plane back up. Even if fuel leakage is confirmed, it will not be possible to take the ship to 39,000 feet. In the next few minutes, all doubts were dispelled when the plane's right engine caught fire. Seeing this, there was chaos in the plane and the passengers, who were still sleeping peacefully. Their peace was covered by clouds of fear. The ship now carried 4.5 tons of fuel and only one engine. It was not possible to cruise the ship on this one engine, so the altitude started to decrease gradually. On the other hand, emergency was enforced at Tarsira Airport. Fire trucks and emergency crews began their preparations to deal with any eventuality. The plane, which was still 240 kilometers from Tarsira Airport, now had only 600 kilograms of fuel left. In that moment, what was feared happened. The plane's left engine caught fire due to running at full thrust. And now, Flight 236 began to glide over the Atlantic Ocean without an engine. Here. The captain's decision not to drop the ship to 20,000 feet proved to be absolutely correct. Due to the shutdown of both the engines, it was now dark inside the plane. Because the electrical system of the plane also runs because of the engine. Fortunately, the plane's automatic turbine came out, generating just enough electricity at airspeed to power the cockpit's imported equipment. Now, Tarsira Airport was 120 kilometers away. The ship had descended to 30,000 feet, and the captain had to cross this distance only by gliding. The darkness and the drop-dead silence in the passenger cabin created an atmosphere of dread. A silence that might have signaled a disaster. The worst case was that if the plane could not reach the airport, it would have to be landed in the ocean. For this reason, the crew began preparing the passenger for a water landing. Ocean landings are inherently dangerous, because even if the passengers survive the impact, they can drown in the water. And if not immersed in water, they can die of hypothermia due to cold water. Now, normally, it is very difficult to glide a passenger plane without an engine. Everything was dependent on the plane's pitch control, which the pilots controlled with a manual stick. The ship's altitude was dropping by the minute at 2,000 feet. In other words, in the next 15 minutes, either the plane will reach the airport or the ocean. When the distance of the plane from Tursera Airport was 15 kilometers, its altitude was 13,000 feet. And normally at this distance, the altitude is 3,000 feet. If the pilot lowers his altitude by doing a nosedive, 
The speed of the plane will be very high, and the chances of crash landing are very high in this situation. That's why the pilot made a 360 circle there. When this cycle was completed, the distance from the airport was the same, while the altitude had dropped to 5,000 feet. This altitude was still high, but not high enough to mount another 360. So the pilot positioned the plane in line with the runway and made a few S turns. Due to S turns, the distance of the aircraft from the runway increased and it got more time to decrease the altitude. Under normal landing conditions, the flaps are held open, which creates drag and increases engine thrust, which raises the plane's nose. But Flight 236 had no engine thrust, so this landing was very different from a normal landing and very dangerous. The pilot had only one chance to land the plane, either R or PAR. Finally, the plane hit the runway with a loud jolt and eight of the 12 tires burst. It must have been a little difficult to stop the plane, but finally, it stopped skidding. As soon as the plane stopped, a fire broke out in its landing gear, which was quickly controlled by the airport team. Flight 236 was the first and last passenger plane in aviation history to record the longest glide time without an engine. When the ride engine was investigated, it was found that a part of the engine had been changed by the maintenance team prior to take off in Toronto, but that part belonged to another plane. The loose fitting caused it to vibrate, causing it to hit the fuel line passing nearby. A year later, Captain Robert Patch and First Officer Dirt Dagger were awarded the Superior Airmanship Award. Thanks for watching Pineapple Updates, and be sure to hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications for more exciting updates and interesting content.